Peace and welcome. Today we have episode 39 of Oddly Familiar. We have an old school style episode where we cover 10 random themes today. So sit back, get comfortable, and let's get this started. In at number 10, we have the title theme for NHL 96. It's in the game. And not for the first time, Two Unlimited, get ready for this. So this NHL theme is clearly inspired by Two Unlimited. The entire theme is nothing but riffs and melodies from their song Get Ready For This. And if you look in the credits of the game, you can see their names. It does make sense EA would want to emulate this song. It has been played in, I dare say, every NHL rink across the nation. For the longest time, I just knew 2 Unlimited as that group that makes all the songs for sports arenas. We let you hear the NHL 96 theme from the Super Nintendo, but the Sega Genesis has its own version and it still sounds like two Unlimiteds get ready for this. Number nine, Conquer, live and reloaded. War cutscenes. Now I'm pretty sure Conker got that from Kill Bill. <laughs> Conker Live and Reloaded is a platform video game developed by Rare exclusively for the Xbox, released in June of 2005. The single player mode is a remake of the 2001 game Conker's Bad Fur Day for the Nintendo 64, and with how popular Kill Bill was when it was released in 2003, I think it's safe to say Conker sampled this from Kill Bill. However, when you look into it a little deeper, Kill Bill sampled this from a song titled Ironside, released in 1971 by Quincy Jones. Ironside is the original Kill Bill sound, and yes there is a chance Conker actually sampled it from Quincy Jones, but considering Conker is known to parody movies, I think it's safe to say they got this from Kill Bill. Quick shout out to Bersona11 for bringing the Conquer theme to my attention. With their submission and a little research, we collaborated to bring you this submission. In at number 8, Final Fantasy 8. Here is Fine Young Cannibals, Good Thing. We put this one in at number 8 because it's Final Fantasy 8. Both of the beats have the same bouncy feeling, Instruments used may be different, and Final Fantasy throws the Chocobo melody over the top, so it kind of masks the lack of main vocals and helps the track to feel completed. The Fine Young Cannibals released their song in 1988 and Final Fantasy VIII in 1999. I have heard both of the songs and never made the connection, so thanks to the worst Amy for the comment and pointing this one out to us. We appreciate it. number seven. For the first time, Naruto has appeared in our series. From the game Clash of the Ninja. 
Here is the melody titled Rooftop. And here is a song by Michael titled Policy for Love. Submitted by Trevin, and as they said, they don't know which one came first. So I did a little research. I found the Naruto game was released on April 11th, 2003, and Policy for Love on December 13th of 2001. If you aren't hearing the similarity, listen for the synthesizer that almost has a whistling type of sound. On the song Policy for Love, it's pretty much front and center, while Rooftop has a few more instruments going so it kind of blends in. And once you really listen to it, the Naruto version sped up the melody a little bit, but it's very similar. It's similar enough to where I would say that is a sample. Here is a mashup of the two tracks that I threw together, and the only thing I did was speed up the track Rooftop. <laughs> Number 6. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Enter the Vertex. And here is the Matrix, the shooting spree theme. As you can tell from the name of the Conquer theme, Enter the Vertex is a play on words of Enter the Matrix. When you play the game, you are met with a similar scene to the shooting spree from the Matrix. The stage, the outfits on the characters, the moves, and of course the music are all inspired by this one scene. This is the second one that was given to me by the same person. So another quick shout out to Bearsona11 for the second time in this episode. <laughs> Number 5. Fantasy. Stage 4. And here is the 1979 song Funky Town by Lips Inc. Fantasy is an action adventure game developed by SNK and released in October 1981. One interesting aspect about the game is the fact it uses no buttons, only a single joystick. This game, according to this book here, was the first video game to have a continue feature. Anyways, once you reach level 4, you will hear the familiar tune. And shout out to ASIM77 for bringing this one up. With this game being from October 1981, it is the second oldest game to appear in Oddly Familiar. Vanguard the Arcade Game was released in Japan in July of 1981, so it missed out by just a few months. Unlucky number 4. Battle Clash, Enemy Introduction. And here is Double Dragon, a new challenge. Up next is one that might not be on purpose. There is no parody aspect and no real connection between the two games. The Double Dragon theme originates from the 1987 arcade game and has seen many different renditions on many different consoles. The original composition was composed by Kazunaka Yamane, while Battle Clash is a 1992 Super Nintendo game developed by Nintendo R&D 1 
alongside intelligent systems. Intelligent systems may be best known for developing the Fire Emblem and the Paper Mario series. The soundtrack for Battle Clash was composed by Yuka Tsujiyoko, who has composed mainly for Fire Emblem. Thanks to Tricepta for submitting this one. It may not be the exact same, but that for sure does make me think of Double Dragon. Sonic the Hedgehog, Green Hill Zone. And here is Dreams Come True, Marry Me. Unlike the last entry, this one has a clear connection. The man behind the music is Masato Nakamura. He composed both Green Hill Zone and Marry Me. His name is all over the credits, and even Dreams Come True appears in the credits on the Sonic game. If you watch the Sonic movie, I actually waited through the entire credits just to see if his name appeared. And it did. You can see it right here. I took this photo in the theater. On my favorite version of the Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 soundtracks, you can see not only Masato's name right on the cover, but also dreams come true. The speed and tempo of the songs are slightly altered, but the melody is there. The first time I heard this song by Dreams Come True was in 2005 while in Japan. I heard the song quite often, and little did I know, it was by the same composer that I grew up listening to. Zeno Saga, Episode 1, Escape. And from the movie Aliens, a theme named Bishop's Countdown. Before we dive into this one, I want to give a quick shout out to Juan Pablo for the comment and the submission. Both themes are intense and have a hint of an industrial feel. The Alien soundtrack was composed by James Horner. His first major work was in 1979 for the movie The Lady in Red. In 1982, he worked on Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan and his most popular work came when his score for James Cameron's Titanic became the best-selling orchestral film soundtrack of all time. However, Horner was criticized for reusing passages from his earlier compositions, and for featuring brief excerpts and reworked themes from classical composers. For example, his scores from Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan and Star Trek III The Search for Spock includes excerpts from Alexander Nevsky and Romeo and Juliet. So maybe someone borrowing his work was a bit of karma. In a 1997 issue of Film Score Monthly, an editorial review of Titanic said Horner was, quote unquote, skilled in the adaption of existing music with just enough variation to avoid legal troubles. Which kind of seems to be the slogan for Oddly Familiar. Dragon Quest X, Melody of the Blade. And here is the intro theme to the TV show SWAT. So I know what you may be thinking. That's not SWAT. And yes, you are right. 
This TV series aired on ABC from February 1975 to April 1976. Two seasons totaling 37 episodes. Created by Robert Hamner, SWAT star Steve Forrest, Robert Urich, and Rod Perry with the opening theme composed by Barry Dave Orzon, who is a Grammy Award winning musician. He won the 1978 Grammy for Best Instrumental Arrangement for Nadia's theme from The Young and the Restless. Dragon Quest X is a 2012 RPG. It is the 10th game in a series in which the Western world titled Dragon Warrior. Finally, when Part 8 was released, the title was fixed to the original Japanese title, and the series was finally named Dragon Quest as it should have been all along. The music in the game was arranged and composed by Koichi Sugiyama. He first got involved with the Dragon Quest series back in 1991 when he composed the music for the Dragon Quest anime, which was broadcasted on TBS from 1991 to 1992, with a total of 46 episodes. So needless to say, he wasn't new to the Dragon Quest realm. Last but not least, shout out to Zero Fanatic for commenting and submitting this Dragon Quest X one. I honestly would have never heard this one. And with how detailed this comment was, from giving me links to telling me timestamps, it was perfectly set up. <laughs> So with episode 39 in the books, we had a lot of shout outs in this episode and I do gotta say, comments like that do help. I have a long list of oddly familiar songs, but getting comments like these give us some all new ones that we may have never heard of otherwise. So I just want to dedicate this episode to everyone who has submitted an oddly familiar song. Even if we haven't got to it yet, the fact you took the time to watch, listen, and leave a comment is what keeps us going. And for the third time in this episode, going for the hat trick, we have a shout out for Bearsona11, because he is our only gold level patron. I am ICC, thanks for watching, peace.